Hello and welcome to the Lichthof, the inner courtyard at the Federal Foreign Office in Berlin. I am Ambassador Michaela Küchler and I am the President of the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance, the IRA. Today I have the honor and the pleasure of opening the exhibition A Photographic Journey into Roma Lives, featuring works by Joachim Eskilsen and Nihad Nino Pusia. Contemporary Roma lives are complex. The portraits in this exhibition take a perspective that is both artistic and documentary. The two artists' work thus provides an insight to visitors into the fascinating and diverse reality of the lives of Europe's largest minority. It is the first time in many months that an exhibition is taking place in this space at the Foreign Office. It is thus also a statement that despite the difficult circumstances, cultural events live on. Unfortunately, access to the building still has to be restricted. We thus hope that this film, en lieu of an opening ceremony, can give an impression to everyone who is unable to see the exhibition on site. In 2020 and 2021, Germany has held three presidencies, in the IRA, in the Council of the European Union and in the Committee of Ministers of the Council of Europe. In all these presidencies, Germany put an emphasis on the situation of the Sinti and Roma. So allow me to speak about what we have achieved. The exhibition we are opening today takes place in the framework of Germany's presidency in the Council of Europe's Committee of Ministers. Increasing the visibility of Europe's largest minority is one of our priorities. To this end, we have sponsored a series of events, conferences, seminars and concerts in close cooperation with the Council of Europe and with ERIAC, the European Roma Institute for Arts and Culture. ERIAC is also curating this wonderful exhibition I am grateful to the curators, the artists and the Central Council of German Sinti and Roma for making this possible. In October of last year, the IRA's 34 member countries adopted by consensus a working definition of anti-Gypsyism, anti-Roma discrimination. Anti-Gypsyism is not new. Indeed, it is centuries old because the working definition is non-legally binding, it can serve as a practical tool in helping to understand and counter anti-Gypsyism and the various ways it can manifest itself. Only a few weeks ago, the Council of the European Union adopted a recommendation on Roma equality, inclusion and participation, a process we started under the German presidency. A series of thematic events, including this exhibition, has been leading up to International Roma Day on 8 April. This year we celebrate 50 years since the first International Romani Congress in London in 1971. It is all the more important to do what those at the first Romani Congress pioneered, to celebrate living Romani culture and raise awareness of the issues facing Romani people.
We are standing in the Federal Foreign Office of Germany and I am here with the artist photographer Joachim Eskilzen. This is an exhibition entitled uh, A Journey into Roma Lives and uh, the exhibition features two distinguished contemporary photographers who approach a topic which is very problematic in photography and in the history of European photography and this is photographing the Roma subject. Both artists, Joachim Eskilzen and Nihat Pushia, managed to work with this topic and with these thematics and with the Roma object in a meaningful way, sensitively and humanly, and show us an, an example of photography that we can surely depend on and celebrate. Joachim, welcome at the Federal Foreign Office. Uh, I would like you to introduce uh, your uh, photographs that we use to feature um, the exhibition for those who arrive to the Federal Foreign Office. And I would like you to tell us about the life stories uh, that are embedded in these photographs, because uh, I know from your book and from your own personal story as a photographer that your images also represent the human story of uh, family, belonging, mm. uh, growth, connection. So I would love to hear them shortly. Yeah, this exhibition that we here see, uh, my part of it, is a, a, result of, a result of seven years of work, six years of traveling together with um, Sia Rinne, my partner. Totally we spent, uh, I think, more than three years uh, staying with Roma in, in six European countries and in India as well. It, it has many personal um, layers to my life. F first one, in school I was told you gotta do this and this in this and this way. And when we stayed with the Roma there were so many other ways of thinking and doing that I thought my god it's like it's so amazing, so other ways of thinking, it's so beautiful. And um, that was one thing and, and so we and then there was also the part of, um, we were in South Africa, uh, Sia, Rina and I, and um, we were doing a book there and we, we realized about the second class citizen and apartheid. And we, um, we had some experiences uh, and we thought it could be so interesting to get more to, to know what is the situation. This was the start. Then it took over and over and over until uh, we realized each Roma community, each country we visit had a different aspect, a different world. Some spoke, didn't spoke Romanes, some spoke Romanes, some, it was all kind of things. It's a very scattered thing, it it's very hard to understand. So actually one main concept was Jim Jarrett's movie, Night on Earth, Taxi Driver, where he pinpoints, boom, the taxi driver falls down in Helsinki and he drives around in a reality there. Well, then he's in New York, then he's in Paris. We thought at least we could do that. We drop down in Hungary, little village. We talk about the thing there. We cannot talk about all about Roma because there is too much. But then we can, we did something honest attempt in small places. First level will be uh, your childhood experience. What you experienced as a child what uh, gave, in my case, it was my grandmother and the way of living with nature, being part of soil. She was self-sufficient with, with the food and everything. So it, it uh, loaded me to focus on that world. Se secondly, um, that's the unconsciousness uh, thing. I, I don't know what it, what it is, but there's something you react on as an instinct. And this is a mystery. And that mystery will never ever evolve for yourself. That's why you keep on going. I, will look, I always go crazy when it's foggy weather. Where there's a certain kind of light against my eyes. I like it, I love it. And there's a saying, uh, you need the right light to, under, to see the, a person's soul or thing. So it is true, there is a right light for everything. And then there is the moment. The moment where you are there, you have your camera, you just react, no thinking. You just have to place yourself in the in the place of the story. That's where the Roma is, mostly and where you feel you belong, you, you're interested in this. So that's always the, the first uh, thing. Place yourself where the story is. And then when you're where the story is, don't think about the story. 
at least try to tell as little as possible about the story. As for example in some of these pictures, is, this is a Roma neighborhood in France. Um, that cloud, yes, what does it tell about uh, this? But in a story, in a kind of a, like a movie book making, it is a spirit, it is a moment, it is linked to the spirit of that place and these people and it is a Roma story. But it is not really a, you know? So this is the way of thinking. That I'm not thinking, oh, I'm not thinking, oh, I gotta show a man, a Roma man sitting and saying, no, I'm thinking uh, I am in a space and then you go in there. The main point is to be in the space and then forget about the story. I started photographing. I was photographing uh, my grandmother. Then I started to photograph my brother. Then I took some self portraits. Then I took pictures of different things. So I see it like an actor. You know, now I'm close to 50, I have children, I, my repertoire is big. So I always uh, see different uh, human beings in different things. So even mean people, um, brutal people, I think they were once children, innocent with dreams and hopes. Even if they don't have it now, they have it inside themselves and it helps me to look at them in a different way. So I was waiting for this, this beautiful wind that comes from inside the house because that makes this, the ghostly moment, you know? I was taking, you know, so it's like a theater scene. You, you take the whole village like a theater scene. They know who you are, they talk to everybody, and you don't need to explain. I can just act when things happen. As I told the Finnish Kale, uh, uh, and Finland in general, uh, has a own distinguished uh, light and color and seasons. And in the beginning I wasn't so much aware of this, but as I took uh, more pictures and I have had uh, more pictures on the table, I realized there's a certain tone, a certain, um, yes, a certain light and form, brownness and certain kind of things. And then it's as if each country, I devoted a certain color to the country. So I kind of started to look for that color. So it's in the end it's loose, and then in the end it's like Kislovsky's movies, you know, white and this. In the end you, you get inspired by certain colors, uh, and it, it uh, goes in interaction with itself. The, the way we thought about the Roma was um, not that we are, uh, have an agenda, not that we are going to have a, a certain kind of um, thing we want to say, but what we experienced after we came home and all this was that this is a miracle that we have a gold mine of a treasure culture surviving 500 years of a bad discrimination, still very positive, still full of allergic, energetic. Uh, and th this is what I um, always feel if somebody misunderstands my book and said, no, this is a, um, a book about a treasure for Europe, for us. My art and my photography are always closely linked with my life. Whenever I enter a place or settlement, I have the impression that I'm already familiar with the situation and already know what to expect. The more of my time I spend there, the more intense and authentic my experience will become, along with my related artistic analysis and later production. To document the living conditions of the Roma people is not a safari in order to obtain quick snapshots, then to leave the very next moment and never to return. I do not want my images to be misused in the media. I consider it very important to keep control over my photographic portraits and to safeguard the identity of the pictured persons. It's crucial to me to decide in which context my images are published. I see art as a suitable medium to point out grievances. In my long-term photographic documentations, I mostly focus on those who are marginalized in the European countries, among them many Roma. I supplement their photographic images with their personal and background stories. I thereby open up an inside perspective, which will hopefully change the perception of these groups in the long term. 
to reflect everyday life in Europe, I also combine various topics and photographic subjects. Focusing on this also allows me to orientate towards my artistic strategies. With every change of location, one of my artworks comes to its natural end.
It is my honor to introduce you my two discussants, Mihaela Dragan and Raya May Knight. So when I'm thinking about the um, photograph, cultural heritage, um, what comes in my mind are the photographs that I discovered in the last years um, that were taken during the Holocaust, that were, um, yes, especially, especially um, they were por portrait designing Roma women from here, from, from Romania, who were deported in uh, Transnistria, in the camps from Transnistria. And I remember that what uh, shocked me was the fact that uh, always in these pictures, the, um, the women were smiling, but at the same time, all her body and most of them appearing uh, naked uh, in the, it, it was such a big contrast. And I, I just realized that afterwards I read about this, that actually this is how the soldiers, how the, how the Nazi put them to, to, to be smiling in these pictures. Meanwhile, they are so dehumanized and so humiliated, appearing without clothes on them. And um, I remember that this kind of images just struck me a lot. Like it was super, super powerful. And when we, when we speak about the cal cultural heritage of Roma people in uh, pictures, this, I think this is one of the aspects that we, we should discuss because it talks about um, our history, but also it talks about in a very humiliating and dehumanizing way about uh, us as the, as the victims slash survivors of all this history oppressive history. So yeah, and I remember uh, I remember the postcards from the communism period, for example, in Romania, where, where Roma people were portrayed as handcrafters. And this, this was something uh, beautiful that I, I discovered that my parents or my grandparents, they, they had things like that. And I, I liked, for example, this kind of representations. But I also remember growing up with um, all the pictures from the, from the mass media and so on, where again, Roma people were portrayed as poor people. This, uh, it, it yeah, <laughs> or, you know, is this term tragedy porn that explains <laughs> so much about the way in which Roma people uh, appear in, uh, in pictures. So much um, poverty, so much victimhood, no dignity. And again, this was something that uh, I remember as a child made me feel ashamed. Um, and I know that this is perpetuating until present and many times I found this kind of photographs about, about Roma people in which they are exposed in their, in their poor houses, in their non-hygienical uh, you know, conditions and don't give any context, don't give any context about about the lives of these people, about how they are segregated in their villages, cities, how the city hall, they don't pave our ways, how they don't have access to electricity or to water. And this is something exotic for the Western uh, gaze. Mm. And these kind of pictures make us look the other in uh, for yeah for the western eyes and exotic i also i also want to to talk a little bit about the the women how they are stereotyped and exotified and their bodies and this is something that started from the paintings i think is a history that the photographs perpetuated because all this exotization started from from all the paintings that showed women very, the Roma women were hypersexual 
and many times these kind of paintings have uh, uh, we don't know the name of the of the woman that um, we see her portraits and i think this is another thing that we should discuss in uh, roma photography that this these women they don't have names you know they are the maid or the um, beautiful gypsy or i don't know but never they don't have a name you know and this mm. is part of the dehumanizing process i think uh yeah it um I feel I feel sad every time when I see this kind of pictures, and I know that uh, many it's a it's a kind of history here in Eastern Europe that many many Western photographs are coming and they want to take pictures in the Roma communities because they know that this will explode in the Western because they look different, they look exotic, they look uh, kitsch and so on and i think yeah we we should oppose to this kind of attitudes and i i love one of the paintings of gosia now <laughs> I'm, I'm just making connections with um uh with uh, yeah with someone that tried to to come in a community and take pictures and and the characters in the paintings, they show their back. <laughs> and this is a form of resistance <laughs> somehow. So yeah, I think we should talk more about this and about how can we effectively create resistance. I was just uh, thinking actually when Michaela was talking, it reminded me of this time that uh, we were on tour with the Roma army actually, and we were in Varuna, I think in Czech Republic. and. Um, in, in our dressing room backstage, there was a picture of a naked uh, gypsy, it was tagged gypsy woman, um, up in the wall of one of, our, of one of our dressing rooms. And it felt like this huge um, kind of juxtaposition of the fact that we were on stage with this show, reclaiming our image and uh, putting forward a representation of ourselves that we, how we wanted to be seen. And it was very much like a sort of empowering, um show that we were putting forward where we were really uh like trying to counter people's stereotypes about us and then as soon as we step backstage and go behind the curtains there's this huge naked picture of a roma woman on the wall unnamed um and that really for me sort of highlighted the the situation that we're in with with representation of romani women um in art um where yeah behind the scenes it's a completely different story somehow and um yeah, I, I, I think um, I think this act of having like uh, photographs taken from within the community is an incredibly important thing because a lot of what Michaela was saying as well was that these pictures are often taken from an outsider perspective and someone looking in from and, and kind of taking our image and reflecting it back to us. And that in turn creates a sort of loop where if you're only ever reflected back a certain image about yourself, it becomes a sort of self-fulfilling image that you almost like live up to or you can't escape. And, and we have been, I mean, as, as you as addressed earlier, like we've been perceived as exoticized, romanticized, sexualized, fetishized. And those are stereotypes which don't just exist in, in artistic representation, but are things that we as Romani women have to deal with in, in our daily lives when we meet people. And, and those, those, that way that we've been represented carries through into real social con contexts. So I think for me, like having a, a photographer from within the community photographing us with such like um, honesty and strength and like such respect for the person that he's photographing, it's, it's really about reclaiming that image that has been systematically stripped from us and 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 it's an act of resistance in, in itself but it's also a move forward into a new way of of how very many people can be represented So I think the only possible thing that can change the perspective will be that more Roma artists being encouraged to, to be photographs and to produce more you know, contemporary Roma art photography. And 
I mean, there are already some examples besides Nino Pusia is Barira Flori. She also has some beautiful photographs, powerful and uh, Selma, Selma, and I think she also, I also saw, yes. So I think, yes, we should encourage more Romani artists to take, to take photographs of us and presenting us as we felt represented in Nino portraits, for example, <laughs> because um, when, when now, when remembering all the, all the pictures that Nino took from us and also like looking at the portrait of Raya or Simonida or Delaine. I mean, I see so much dignity and power there and I feel proud, you know, and I feel like, wow, I'm part of a community. I'm a part of movement. I'm part of a change. <laughs> and uh, this is beautiful. And I know that, um, and, you know, also takes photographs of other Roma people, not only artists. And I remember him being here in Bucharest and taking pictures from a Roma sex worker until um, Roma from Furentar, the marginalized neighborhood, here, uh, neighborhood from here, from Bucharest. And also like, you know, humanizing so much you know these people and presenting them so beautiful and yeah so i'm i i don't have a solution because i don't work in photography like now <laughs> i started to work in video art and i think it's the most difficult <laughs> thing to do ever but I think there should be more representation within the Roma community because we have this experience, you know, of, we know how it feels to someone to come to you in your community and asking for no permission to photograph your house, your families, and so on. And many times I see this also in the, in the communities where I'm working that's always, some non-Roma people are moving and yes, they want to take pictures of them. Now, for example, working with a community of witches, many times I see, you know, CNN, Reuters and all these big uh, uh, press agency that they, they come and sometimes, you know, they have good intentions, <laughs> but they are so so attracted by anything that is different you know so i think to it's it's a whole process to decolonize and deconstruct all, all these principles of eurocentrism you know and discover another way to do to do photography to make to take pictures and i think this is the responsibility of of the Gage, if they, if they have to take pictures in the Roma community and there is no other Roma photograph around, they, they should just learn, you know, things and learn to deconstruct everything that they know about, yes, Roma people. <laughs> and my mom uh, takes photos and she always talks about positive portraits of the community and that's what she really aims to take. So I think for me, like, I've, I've learned from, from all these people and, and see when you have a picture of someone that is empowering and, and gives them this gravitas and gives them this strength, um, it speaks so much about the community and it completely betrays us in, 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 in how we really are. And, and I think uh, for the future, I would, I would see like, yeah, we need to continue with more of this self-representation self and, and no longer um, need to rely on, on the external gaze and how we're the, how how our image is put out into the world and also the fact that it's, it's already happening like we have all of these amazing photographers and artists representing us from the community so we you know there's there's so many so many talented people doing it already and 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 also with social media I'm now so amazed um on on Instagram and stuff with the amount of young Romani women representing themselves online and doing activist work through their social media platforms and putting out their image how they want to be perceived and they're all incredibly politically engaged and like self-reflective and and they're, they're really questioning how their image will be seen by the external viewer. Like, 
the idea that because we've been so fetishized and exoticized as Romani women, if you if you have a photo of yourself where you look sexually appealing in some way, are you fulfilling the stereotype or are you reclaiming your sexuality? And it puts you in such a difficult position when you're when you're always having to combat these um, stereotypes where you actually can't allow yourself to just be because you're always second guessing how it will be perceived by the external society because of the amount of misconceptions they have about us as a community and the amount of racism. I wanted to say about Nino's photos as well, like I think he he really takes the subject very seriously and he gives them gravitas. And I mean, with I was just looking just before we started this call at the photo he took of me in 2017. And I was 20 at the time and he really took me so seriously in his photo. And he like, he, he really like, you know, he made me look like a grown up artist. <laughs> the way he represented me was very strong and like mature and, and he had the power to do that through his camera. And that was really um, an empowering thing for me as a young person at that point. I was, I actually remember it was um, a day that we were playing the Roma army and I was there with the late Damien Labar and Delane. And, um, and we were, it was his coffee and portrait series in the column that he did, I didn't. And um, yeah, we were there and, and actually Damien was saying, no, Nina, you must photograph Raya. You've got to photograph Raya. She's, she's new and like, she hasn't really been photographed much, but you've got to photograph her. And Delane was like giving me tips of how to like compose my face really seriously. And I think once she even let me be photographed, uh, watch her be photographed so I could like learn how to do this serious portrait face um and that was really a, an act of, of them from the community empowering me as a young person coming up and helping me claim how I was going to be represented and and trying to facilitate that I remember that he took uh, pictures uh, of me individually and also with other people with Simonida for example one of my I, I think that one with Simonida is one of my favorite pictures from Nino because it really shows like sisterhood love and solidarity and I think this is something that speaks for me when I look at the picture. Thank you uh, to both of you, because these are really quiet, intimate moments. I think that uh, that uh, Nihat Pushia is uh, recording and sharing with you, and then it, he is sharing with the world later with the photographs. So um, thank you for sharing this uh, with, the, with the audience uh, of the exhibition.